and welcome back to Trek Yard's Mission Briefing, a weekly Wednesday dose of look at anything from the multi-faceted spectrum of the Trek universe. Any race, any law, any canon, any non-canon. Today is not canon, not side canon, not fake That's canon. Exactly. It's licensed. It's licensed Trek. Lovely distinction there. And it's another one that Stuart's brought to us, and I've not analysed it before today, but Stuart might have known this ship for decades, possibly. Maybe, maybe. So, Stuart, hi. How are you doing? What are we looking at? And tell us things, oh mighty commander of this um, fleet. Yeah, um. I don't know what I was going with that. But I went somewhere. <laughs> well, today we're looking at another Starfleet Battleship. Starfleet Battles is a tabletop board game that was in the late 70s, early 80s, mm -hmm. uh, based on the TOS aesthetic of Star Trek. Uh, yes. And uh, today we're going to be bringing you another Romulan ship. This is the Romulan vulture class dreadnought also known as a heavy carrier um okay worth worth noting that it's a it's a, also an early dreadnought design so we've okay. looked at you know there are later dreadnought designs like the condor and stuff but okay yeah so vulture class today Here yes it is. uh it's a it's a klingon bird of prey warbird tos with stuff on you said Klingon. You mean Romulan. Uh, Romulan. You know what? Everyone knows what I meant. <laughs> no uh, one knows what you meant. It, it, it's the same ship but sort of stuff put on. Yes. Well, <clears throat> as with things with Starfleet Battles, they use the same shape, same design. Just altered things a little bit, added things, kit bashed a little bit. Because, like I said, this is the Dreadnought version of it. There's also a carrier-based version of it, which uh, holds a ton of shuttles. Um, like fighter... like suicide shuttles and things like that um but this one is the dreadnought version specifically and as you can see yeah they've kept that romulan aesthetic they've just upscaled it and it, it i i rather like this design i think it's very subtly different but enough different that it's it's noticeable well, and it, it is it is quite a bit bigger than the other one but we'll get to the size chart in just a second well yeah i'm wondering with scale because there is some windows on the the original one, or at least some of the CG ones, are those little dots on the second layer after the bridge module? Are they meant to be windows? Uh, I would, I would imagine so. I think they're porthole windows. Yeah. Because even the the original one from Bounce mm -hmm. Terra had the, the the one ring of windows, and I think they were just small portholes. There's not a lot of yeah. windows on R Romulan ships. Yeah. So it's hard to say, but yeah, I would imagine so. This that is so, this is. Yeah, this is bigger than that ship, so. Well, yeah, certainly much bigger. I mean, what was the role ten in the in the Starfleet Battle Universe? Because we're looking at that specifically. What was the role of the original one we saw then in Bounds of Terror? What was that cast as? Well, that was there's different versions of that one. There's a War Eagle, which has additional weapons. That the one in Bounds of Terror was a test bed for the plasma torpedo weapon. Um. Then the King Eagle and the War Eagles came later, which had added weapons, more like they had phasers. They they were more, more capable ships, but that one was initially just a test bed. But I, I you'd associate with a, a a low class of ship role, you know, in terms of space frame, small ship, low. I mean, we've seen schematics as base for one shuttle, very small crew. The bridge is tiny. Like it's it's a very, it was designed well. It had one thing on it. That was good. Everything else mm -hmm. was a super basic ship. This is well, too. Not... It had the cloaking device and the plasma. Uh, yeah, but lots of ships had cloaking device as well. It wasn't that? Wasn't you know the new thing? Um, yeah, but the cloaking device helped with the the weapon because all the all the power had to go to the weapon. So you had to cloak, power that weapon, take a lot of time, have your shields either off or in low power setting, charge up that weapon, then you could decloak and fire. Yes. Reinforce your shields, hopefully cloak again before you got attacked. Yes. I mean, it's, it's a stealth vehicle. But uh, this, this is one, Dreadnought. Yeah, this active. one's much loaded up. It's got plasmas on the tips of the nacelles, as most of the Starfleet Battles uh, Romulan ships do, because they use pl the uh, exhaust plasma from the nacelles to actually mm. channel it into plasma weapons. Mm. Um, it also has uh, plasma torpedo launchers on the front as well. Mm. And uh, Phaser 1s, uh, and that's about it. It's got six Phaser 1s, apparently. Hmm. Um, so, but again, there are different versions and different variations because it's a tabletop game, so there were always different um, SSDs with different internal 
mm. um, configurations, uh, added weaponry, things like that. So Now, I'm wondering, this is a much more literal the same ship with some tweaks, but it's, you know, much bigger. How would you feel then if if they'd gone the direction of take the Enterprise um, and just upscale the saucer three times, looks identical, uh, well, upscale the entire ship three times, but it's the same, like, would that make any sense for the species to say, right, we love this design, we're now going to be able to build it three times as big, we're not going to build a new ship, we're not going to try and do anything different, just this in cell is now three times bigger, because lols. Wow. You know, yes and no. I mean, as a kid, I always I always pictured the Federation class dreadnought much bigger than the Constitution class. It's only when we started doing this show and I was crunching the numbers and doing the research that I found out this is slightly bigger than the Constitution class, which makes sense because the nacelles are basically the same nacelles. Yeah. Um, which I never really considered as a kid. I just thought dreadnought more powerful, bigger. Yeah. But that's, um, that's what as I mean. we've as well, I've, we've had this discussion about the Jaeger class specifically, which has got the Maki Raider. <laughs> Which is a small ship, but then it's upscaled to be the size to fit the, the, the head of the Intrepid class. It just doesn't make sense. And we've talked about yeah. this multiple times with Star Trek because it's, uh, it's an ongoing issue with the Bird of Prey and things like that. Well, it doesn't make sense to really upscale that design huge. Would, would the race say, let's build the exact same ship, but three times as big? I mean... Because this is very not, similar. We haven't the head other of the views. fleet... If the head of the fleet has OCD and wants everything to look the same, <laughs> who knows? But the, let's, let's, we're, we're talking about size. Let's go to the next picture. Okay. This shows it against the War Eagle class, which is the same uh, as the one oh, we saw in Balance of Oh, Terror. okay. Well, that's okay. No, it's a different ship. Okay, yeah. they've, 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 they've squashed it in Photoshop, or they've stretched it in Photoshop. <laughs> there um, was no Photoshop back then. Nice. Yeah. Well, to be fair, this is also not from then, but... Okay, no, like, this is this is this is different. This is this is more like a Katinga is to a B ten, similar components yeah. but done differently. And it's not even that much bigger, really, no. from a low end scout specialist ship to this. It's just a, like a, a, a it's, it's a it's a class bigger, not just a little jump. Like it's not a bit bigger, but it's not huge bigger. It's just like a class or two up. Yes, yes, and unlike the Federation class, which uses the same nacelles essentially as the Constitution class, this yeah. has upscaled nacelles. Yes, uh, but the same same design, same basic design iteration. Mm. So, I I like it though. I like the different shapes, different angles. Everything is different yet the same. It's actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more yeah, pointy one, as well. Yeah, this is one I I do like. Um, yeah, but like I said, it's the early dreadnought. Eventually, they once after the treaty with the Klingons, they start incorporating new shapes and mm. new design elements into their ships. But this is one of the early ones bef before that. So oh. at least that's what in game it is. If you go to the next picture, it's a shot from the bottom, and again, it, it adds a little bit more dimensionality here with that bulked up center section, which isn't in the original yes. uh, design. Um, same bird, actually, actually, it's a little bit different. It's got more feathers and stuff on the wingtips to differentiate it, I think. <laughs> but uh, interesting design, nonetheless. Um, yeah. And no, here, I you, here you can see you can you can see some of the uh, windows on the uh, mm. on the edge. So you can get a feel for decks. Hmm. So no, I like I like the I like the bulked out. I mean, the only difference is the bulked out middle beyond the different shapes, but mm. I like it. it. It feeds into the where it feels like it feeds literally into the front weapons. Like there's more tech needed behind the hood, uh, under the <laughs> hood, and it just happens to be yeah. underneath. So that yeah, I actually I I, I like that simple, but it's yeah. it's something. Yeah. And I'm not 100% sure, don't quote me on this, but I believe the carrier version of this, that bottom section has doors along the along the edge to be able to launch multiple either fighters or different classes of shuttle. Um, I'm looking at the SSD for the, uh, for the carrier version specifically right now, and yeah, this whole center section is just shuttles, like there's a ton of shuttles. But I don't think I ever saw a miniature or a rendering of it other than this version, right? So I could just imagine that's what they would do is just add doors along that, that edge yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, for sure. Or have drop bays or something. But <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now if you go to the next picture, again, you get another shot of that underside and you get to see the impulse engines at the back. This is a certainly more a literal. It feels a lot more similar. Uh, like yes. This. Yeah, hmm. it's almost like they took 
because if you look at the view from the top for that size comparison, mm -hmm. it's like they took the regular one, cut it right down the middle, pulled them out, and added a section a section in the middle. Because mm. that curve yeah. at the back, <laughs> that's exactly what it looks like they did. Yeah. Um, which, which is it, which works. Yeah. And the next shot is back. Yeah, you know, just 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 more more, just more middle, like you said. Mm -hmm. Although the shapes don't quite connect, it's a very smooth. With some nice curves, and those are very bulky. That like could just be because maybe it's cargo as well. It's just, uh, I think that might be, yeah, it could be a lot of that. Also, the shuttle, there, it does have a regular shuttle deck as far as this dreadnought version. Hmm. Those could be the elevator doors at the top you see there, where right? The shuttles yep. come up, yep. up from like the runabouts on Deep Space Nine. Okay, I'll buy it. Yeah. I'll buy it because other than that, I can't see any other mm -hmm. shuttle launch doors, so um. Next shot's just another shot from the bottom, actually. It's a little bit different, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nothing to really talk about there. So we'll go to the last shot here, and from the side, again, you get a little bit more feel for that, that center section, the way it's shaped. Mm. Um, very much focused on the plasma weaponry at the front there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of this ship. I really am. Well, it's, it's, it's a very literal, let's take the other design and make it into a warship, because I'm seeing the the engines and they've got the only new details are the bits they've added but that makes it feel like it's supercharged that that that's you know what they had to do to give it warp maybe or higher warp yeah if they had warp yeah you know, give it that extra little bit of refit that, that whatever then obviously the same thing with the gun at the front let's beef it up hugely okay boom but it doesn't it doesn't it actually works quite well that sort of shape and then same with the secondary or the, the top hull bit that just pieces added on but it does had a sense of whatever. Wouldn't it be interesting if um, that piece and th that darker piece, the bit that's the only new bit in the front front, if because we know that the bridge is in the center of the ship, it's a mm. you know would it be nice if that was like armor on top of it, so that mm. incoming fire it's got a blade of earlier blade of armor, because you know if it's in the center of the hull, still a shot there, it'll still hit it, but if they had the armor, that'd be you know maybe. Mm -hmm. And one thing I do want to point out, too, is a lot of time with Starfleet battleships, especially the Federation ships, they added the ball turrets, which were very reminiscent of the refit style, because mm. this happened about the same time as the motion picture. So they saw the refit style, but they didn't have the the licensing to use any of that. That was all FASA that had the movie era stuff. Mm. But Starfleet Battles did incorporate the regular TOS Connie with ball turrets, um, which mm. looks great. It looks fantastic. And they add, there's visible weapons on all these ships. This one does have phaser ones and, and and things. You can't really see where they are. So I'm thinking there are phaser threes um, on the SSD that are located on the nacelles. So I think that might be that top part that's added. Hmm. Um, but it's hard to hard to really say for sure because usually the phasers that Adam Adam Turner likes to uh, when he does these renderings really adds the weapons that are visible. You can actually see the little pivot mounts and stuff in them mm. um so it's odd that this one's lacking that any of that considering it's a dreadnought like yeah you can see the four plasma torpedo launchers right up front there but eh, i remember they're uh, hidden for like just like i don't know it's, i don't know Stuart. multiple reasons maybe oh well, yeah i um, mean keep that smooth appearance of the romulans mm -hmm. so it could just be um, the early style where everything is under a plate and then later on, they're like, well, now we don't have to hide. Let's make them out and proud and shooty shooty. Loud and proud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back to the first picture, which would be our last picture. Again, this is a cool ship. Um, I, I, I do enjoy it, but it is an early dreadnought. It is one of the early era ships for the Romulans. And as they develop, they do incorporate new design styles and things because of the Klingon Alliance. Uh, which is neat because look at the Condor class, the Sparrowhawk. They're all very different designs. So there's a there's a wide variety of designs in the in the Romulan fleet for Starfleet battles, which is cool. It's almost like they piecemealed yeah. together ships from other races, and just kind of incorporated them into their fleet, and you know took design yeah. elements. And but early on, this was their this was their design style, which is kind of neat. I kind of like that. So, and I do want to ask. I mean, this is this is audience is saying a very similar ship. But do you prefer this one to the conventional one? It's added more things. You know, which one do you prefer and why out of the two? Because they're so uh, different, this could just push you over the edge. 
You mean the one like from Bounce of Terror or the yeah, Condor? Yeah, the Romulan one oh. and this. Which do you prefer and why? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say I prefer this one because it feels more mm-hmm. realistic. There's more, more going on, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. more visible to see. But that being said, I do prefer the original one for its simplicity and for its its, its sleekness. Um, plus, it's the first one we ever saw, so it's kind of got a special place, right? But uh, this one, I think, feels more real. And more real world because you can see, you know, things on the hull. I don't know. It's it's hard to say. I'd take this one pref- preferably in a game because it's Dreadnought. It's got more plasma torpedoes and bigger engines, which means more power supply, which means you can do more with your energy allocation forms. And yeah. Okay. And I, I kind of like this one as a, if it was the same ship, this would be a good Mark II. Hmm. Yes. If it was very similar, just some natural, like, oh, let's just refit, refit, now you got, you know. Well, that's like the King Eagle and the War Eagle class. They're basically mm. the same as the one that balanced Terror, just with added weaponry or, or, and stuff. Or the Saladin and the Hermes, the same ship, just a deflector. Well, the Hermes was exactly the same, except it had less phasers. Yeah. And it was more yeah. of a scientific yeah. scout ship, yeah. 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 But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, this look at another licensed, almost... Almost Star Trek Bounce Terror ship, but actually, no, not at all. You saw the top picture, you know, you know. Yeah. That's right. Um, and if you ever get the chance to play Starfleet Battles, guys, I suggest doing mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a lot more Starfleet Battleships on the show, and more, more will be coming. We haven't even touched a lot of the other races, but we will. We'll get mm-hmm. to them because they have some cool designs and definitely worth talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But in the meantime, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Put your comments down below what you think of this ship, whether you've played with uh, played with this ship, that sounds dirty, whether you've used this ship in Starfleet Battles, um, you can uh, let us know in the comment section. Mm-hmm. Or join us on social media, Facebook, Discord, all the links, all the relative links are in the description below. Mm-hmm. And uh, join the conversation. We've got a great community and lots of, lots of fun topics to talk about. And of course, join us directly on our lives we do every single week on YouTube. You can just join in on Wednesday and Sundays if you do random ones, where Stuart does do random ones occasionally you join the conversation it's normally on either discovery or a, re- a brand new topic or even some classic topics as well we've done episode reviews of the new stuff and the old stuff and just have a grand old time and you can support the channel as well via that it's one of the great ways is super chats that help trek cards exist not even keep going just exist or a regular donation at patreon or a one-time donation at trekcards.com many ways to support this channel and get more cool content looking at ships from the past that you you know and love and then even for the future discovery season two and even smallville because that's always strike. Always. That's right. Yeah. So until next time, guys, and a new ship and really cool stuff, because there's lots of it. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Quantum Huggins. Bye, guys. We'll see you later.